so how did you transition into ice making? Is it something you picked up uh, in juniors or is it a, a job you kind of picked up later on after your competitive career? Well, oddly enough, my first ever job was at the curling club. I was a little ring crat. So I would go in after school. I'd go help uh, the ice maker clean up snow. And then I would go in, clean up the lobby, help the bartender bring kegs up just in time for the draw changeover. So I'd go out, mop, pebble, nip all eight sheets. And then uh, once I was finished up that, I was allowed to go home. Um, and with that, I actually took a couple of my level one, my level two for the ice courses. I didn't do anything with it after that, though. Um, it wasn't until I moved to Newfoundland the second time that the club president at the time at the Remax Center uh, sent me an email, said, hey, we're losing our ice maker this year. We're wondering if you're interested in maybe applying for it. They didn't actually know that I had my level one or my level two at the time, um, and I was working at Future Shop. So it seemed like a good time to make what was a more mature career move. So applied for it, thankfully ended up getting the position um, through an interview, which I, it was my worst interview I think I've ever had. <laughs> had a slightly disastrous first season. You know, it was, I knew the basics, but I really didn't know what I was doing properly. So looking back on it, there was just so many things that I could have done better. But at the time, I just didn't know any better. So, you know, we... We had a good season overall, like membership was good and, uh, you know, we did the best we can, but, uh, you know, the building was lacking to say the least. I remember trying to even do install, looking out the back corner, the power had gone off and you know, part of the roof was starting to come up on the building. So we had to get the uh, engineers to come in and zap that down before we even started. But that was kind of my first real introduction into real ice making and, uh, had a lot of fun with it and a club opened up in Halifax and was kind of interested in not being as getting into a bigger city something with a little bit more opportunities so jumped at that and moved down to Halifax and within a few years I was doing three clubs and 16 sheets and things really took off from there. If someone's looking to get into ice making what should they do is and i know it differs from country to country but i mean is the first thing just go to your local club and volunteer with your ice maker yeah exactly there's also if you're i'd say that's the first step to do um go talk to your local ice tech and and see what they think and um if you volunteer a little bit and get into it maybe see it's something that you like if it is because it's definitely not something that's for everyone volunteer at an event same sort of thing kind of get a, a feel for if it's something that you may like doing and if it's something you really want to pursue i know there's the levels there are uh, different different courses that you can take uh, in order to help improve your skill set and knowledge base and if you get a chance to talk to your association see if you can get involved in some of the higher up stuff and eventually hopefully that leads into some events uh like with Curling Canada or, or curling, the USA Curling Association and WCF. So I think that that's a good starting point. Uh, but it's, as I said, it's not something that's for everyone. It's a lot of hours. It's a lot of work. Um, and it's not a warm job most of the time. So it's similar to like we were talking about earlier with leads. Like, is there a certain personality trait that that ice techs need to have or is it just having a thick skin when it comes to dealing with club curlers <laughs> i think having a thick skin uh is part of it but an open mindset too you know um a lot of curlers they watch watch what's on tv and take everything that's being said um by the people on tv truly to heart um one of russ's famous quotes is that there's no curl out east most mm -hmm. curling clubs out east don't have a lot of curl. Well, you know, we have some fantastic ice techs here in Halifax and a lot of clubs that have a lot of curl. Um, so, again, that's here in Nova Scotia. I can't really talk to too much about New Brunswick, where he's <laughs> from. But um, I know that their opinions mean a lot to a lot of the viewership. So... Thick skin is part of it. Um, 
you have to be able to work weird hours. Like the amount of all nighters that I've pulled over the years are countless. Um, whether it to be to fix a sheet or reflood the ice middle of the season or uh, get it ready for a tournament, um, you have to be ready and willing to work weird and long hours and function on a lot of coffee. Because <laughs> um, sometimes that's all you really have to go off of and and be adaptable. I think that's the biggest thing. There's never a day or an install that's usually the same. Um, I trying to think of one install that's gone perfect start to finish and i can't think of one so being adaptable and being able to adjust on the fly and make things work and not get get you too bogged down is really really important as well 